Put a car pull up in Tupac. Car pull up right here. Tupac at this light. Car went that way. I was, I was living right here in 1996 when Tupac right here. I ain't never told nobody. Only the close people with me know. I mean, when I left that hospital, me and Pac was laughing and joking. So I don't see how somebody can turn from doing well to doing bad. So you and seriously think that he might still be alive? I'm gonna tell you this, Pac, you never know. That's Pac, man. He went the outlaw and Reg from Holly Baxter trying to be friendly and get autographed. So he he was conscious on the way to the hospital? <laughs> he was conscious on the way to the hospital. He was conscious in the ambulance. He was conscious after, um, after they did the surgery. What was the last thing that he said to you? They left. Rappers are continuing to leave more and more hints and reactions towards Tupac still being alive in 2023. Here's what you need to know. Reports state that Tupac sadly passed in the year 1996. However, the suspect was never even found. This leaves many to believe the rapper is still out there somewhere. Many believe Tupac faked his passing in order to escape the war between East and West Coast rap. But to understand everything, we need to dive deeper into the original story on how Tupac passed. As according to reports, on September 7th, 1996, Tupac was in Vegas with the head of his record label known as Suge Knight. They went to the MGM Grand to watch a Mike Tyson match, as after it was over, they were then spotted by an alleged op in the middle of the lobby of the hotel. While at the scene, another friend of theirs was with them. He was known as Trey, as Trey had apparently spotted a member of the Seas known as Baby Lane, as he would go try to warn Tupac, as he supposedly went up to Baby Lane and then asked him if he was from the South. With Baby Lane responding in a negative way, this caused Tupac to swing on the man, causing a massive altercation in the lobby. This was, however, until security came and broke it up, which then led Tupac and Suge Knight to go back to their hotel room to change. They would then go off to a club to go party it up for the night. As it was around 11 p.m., the two were then pulled over for listening to their music too loudly while on the Las Vegas Strip, as they were also driving without light license plates at the time. However, their license plates were actually located in the trunk of their vehicle. The officer would then help them put their license plate back on and then begin driving again. As a few minutes later, a Cadillac stopped where a mystery man in the back seat leans out of his window and began using a firearm towards Pac and Suge, as Tupac would then be hit multiple times and Suge Knight as well. However, Suge was able to drive off for about a mile before getting pulled over again, to which the cop then rushed them to the local hospital, as Tupac was sitting in the passenger seat in critical. Tupac would then sit in the hospital for a very long time, as Suge Knight was released earlier on that night, as not much damage had been done to him. And then, about a week later, September 13th, Tupac allegedly passed from the injuries that he had faced. But oddly enough, the case was never even solved, as recently Floyd Mayweather would state that he witnessed Tupac's targeting in Las Vegas on that night, stating that he lived right by. Put a car pull up in Tupac. Car pull up right here. Tupac at this light. Car went that way. I was, I was living right here in 1996 when Tupac. Right here. I ain't never told nobody. Only the close people with me know. Also in the year 2023, we would even see Snoop Dogg share that that night was very weird, and he was actually supposed to be in that vehicle with Tupac and Suge when the incident went down. You were with Tupac, though, in regards to Tupac. Did you, I heard a story, did you give him different advice that night on where to go? I didn't give him no advice. Right. We wasn't seeing eye to eye. Right. So. Same during the Tyson. Yeah, we, this was, this is, this yeah. incident that I'm explaining to you right now was the day before that. Okay. So when they got to Vegas, they went their way. I went back. I mean, when we got to LA, they went to Vegas and I went home. That's why I wasn't in the car, isn't in the car with them. However, many believe the police just didn't care enough to investigate who was truly behind the entire crime. However, fans immediately started connecting the dots themselves, and they ended up believing the notorious B.I.G. was the man behind the hit, as Biggie had been accused of going after Tupac in the past, as their beef all started in the year 1994, where Tupac had gone to the studio to record a verse. Three guys would end up jumping him in the lobby of 
the recording studio, using firearms at Tupac, even snatching his golden chains. Coincidentally, Biggie and his crew were at the same exact studio when it all happened. However, Biggie was trying to cover it up, saying it was all a coincidence, as he would mention that he had nothing to do with it. But according to rumors, the story doesn't end there, as ever since Tupac was declared to pass in 1996, theories about him faking his passing and still being alive started to rise all over the internet, as an interview from Suge Knight would reveal that Tupac had apparently been doing just fine in the hospital, as Suge Knight would state, I mean, when I left the hospital, me and Pac were laughing and joking, so I don't see how someone can turn from doing so well to doing bad. But the weird thing is that Tupac was supposedly sleeping, so how in the world could he and Suge Knight be laughing if he wasn't able to wake up? That doesn't seem to be adding up. However, in 2018, Suge Knight's son would then take to Instagram to state that Tupac was still alive, and he was living in Malaysia. And then Suge Jr. would go to post another photo showing a text conversation where someone said, you said too much, it's time for you to go. With Suge Knight Jr. now in the heat of the moment, he would post several photos of Tupac alongside modern day celebrities such as 50 Cent and Beyonce. He made it seem like someone was after him and leaking all of his info, so he was trying to defend himself with these photos. As on the pic with Tupac and Beyonce, he would caption it, he never left us, but they will be after me soon. While some believe this was all a publicity stunt for Suge Knight's son to gain social media clout, others believe that this was actual facts, and that Suge Knight Jr. would be the one to know more about this than anyone else. Considering his father was best friends with Tupac, and he was even at the scene of the crime. As back in the year 2014, Suge Knight also told TMZ this. I mean, when I left that hospital, me and Pac was laughing and choking. So I don't see how somebody can turn from doing well to doing bad. So you and seriously think that he might still be alive? I'm gonna tell you this, Pac, you never know. As six months after Suge Knight did this interview with TMZ, he almost got into a situation where his life could have been over at a nightclub, as a man right near him in his area was using a firearm six times. However, Suge Knight was hesitant to tell the police anything, as they all believe it was connected to him talking to TMZ about Tupac being alive. Then in the year 2010, a rapper named Treach was interviewed on the topic of Tupac before a show. As Treach and Tupac were very close friends back in the day, even working on a few albums together. But here's where things got very interesting, as after his interview, the cameraman forgot to stop recording, putting his camera on the floor, as in the footage, you can hear the interviewer asking him about Tupac, where he responds, last time I saw him, he was in Cuba. So if you ain't ready for it, get on the sidewalk. One last question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Nobody knows. As Tupac being alive in Cuba is most likely the most popular theory to this day. His aunt had been living in Cuba since 1994. She was convicted of a serious crime in the United States and she needed to escape. Then in the year 2018, a website called Reporters posted a photo of Tupac allegedly partying with Rihanna in Cuba. As some say the photo is fake, many believe that it's real. In in fact, the Cuba theory became so popular that famous rapper Kendrick Lamar even references it in his track titled Element, where he raps the words, Mr. 1 through 5, that's the only logic. Fake my passing, go to Cuba, that's the only option. As Eminem would also talk about it too in a freestyle he did, where he would say, a lot of talk and a lot of rumors on us, who's the hottest? To be honest, hip hop ain't been the same since Tupac moved to Cuba on us back in the 2000s. Then a video was released from a news website showing a video of Tupac supposedly chilling in a parking lot in Cuba. Where it gets very concerning was in the year 2012. Suge Knight also said the situation with Tupac after the passing was not right at all. Suge Knight would go on a radio show to state, maybe the question is, 
Hawk's not really gone. Hawk is just somewhere else. Suge Knight said live on the air, nobody seen Tupac after it was announced that he passed. The person that was supposedly in charge of handling the situation with Pac got about $3 million personally from me, cash. And then the next thing is I never heard from the guy or seen him again. He got up, retired, and left. And another very strange detail with the official report following Tupac's passing was allegedly that he was listed as 215 pounds. However, Tupac was a very slim dude. Standing at only 5 foot 9, most sources say that he only weighed around 160 pounds. So with the report being off by this much, it's definitely something to think about. Not to mention that it's been rumored Eminem also knows a lot more about Tupac potentially still being alive. Eminem was hugely impacted by the life and music career of Tupac, where Eminem would say this during an interview. Tupac was the first rapper to me that could make you cry. Like, like I felt him that much. And you know, me not knowing my dad and what was going on with my mom and the whole like he was just like oh my god that's me you know he even described where he was at the exact moment he heard a tupac's passing which made it seem like nothing else mattered in that moment where were you in your career when tupac nowhere <laughs> <laughs> when i heard that tupac but i was cooking in the restaurant and tickets were piling up and i'm like i don't care fire me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, man, that was devastating. However, here's where things get strange. Eminem would be the one responsible for producing Tupac's fifth album since passing, titled Loyal to the Game. This was released back in the year 2004. Although Eminem was able to produce the album, it was allegedly his first or second album that he has ever produced. Which raises the question of, why would they trust Eminem with this task if it's only his first time doing it?